Here are 10 settings and keybinds that will definitely improve your gameplay in Lotro. But before I can get into that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if you want more Lotro guides and content. But now, let's just hop right on into it. The first thing I get asked so much, y'all, so much on stream, how do I enlarge the quest text? The way you go about it is that whenever you go to pick up or turn in a quest, you have obviously your quest dialogue that pops up on a window. But what you might not have noticed on that window is if you you go to the bottom rightish corner there's actually this font increaser and sizer it's kind of hidden but it has a capital A and a small a and then there's arrows next to it well those arrows can actually increase and decrease your quest text so you can definitely enlarge it as much as you want however I will just make a note that the sad thing about this is that for whatever reason this doesn't permanently save so every time you log out unfortunately the next time you log into that character you're gonna have to enlarge the font again or decrease it depending on what your preference is. Something else that might help you with reading text in Lotro is by increasing your chat opacity window to 100%. You can find this in your settings under the chat options, but under that you should have the ability to then have a totally black screen by making it 100% opacity, which should make it easier for you to read any text that is going through on your chat window, like world chat or just some fellowship or kinship text. Speaking of the chat window, did you know you could actually filter out certain things that'll go through in your dialogue on the chat window? And what I mean by that is that if you're ever tired of world chat, like we can all be fed up with the crazy topics going on on world chat, let's be honest, then you can actually filter out world chat entirely. The way you do that is by right clicking on a tab on the chat window, which should give you a menu of various different options where you can add a new tab, you can rename a new tab, and here I just added one and then renamed it to test tab but from there you can actually add filters and filters are basically what chats you want shown so if you really want to be tired of world chat and you don't want to see it you don't even have to show it up on that particular tab so in this case what I did I added like fellowship kinship combat logs and then also like whatever I get in loot to show up which you can see like you can see all the combat dialogue going back and forth with me and the enemy and how much damage I dealt and then at the end you can see what loot I received because I filtered the chat like that. Now where things definitely appear in chat, there is also an option to have chat bubbles in the game. Now chat bubbles are essentially the ability to show whatever character is saying above their head. So with that, if your character is saying like, oh hi there, how are you? it actually will appear above that avatar's head, which is really nice for role-playing things. I saw TD's concert once where they put on a whole musical play and they had dialogue going in between the characters because they were typing it all out in the chat, but the chat bubbles made it just way more interesting because it was like the characters were dialoguing to each other. So it's really nice for role-playing purposes and I'm sure you can get creative with other ways on how to include chat bubbles into your fellowships and kinships. Speaking of settings options, one thing that is super helpful for everyone, but especially completionists, is turning on your trivial quests. These are quests that are pretty much out-leveled for you, and therefore they will no longer appear on your radar or mini-map because quite frankly you're too outleveled and the game wants you to pick up quests within your level. But if you're a completionist like me and say you're like a level 50 going back to the Shire and you're trying to look around for great quests, well it can be so easy for you to find them if you just turn on the trivial quest option in your settings. Another setting I recommend you turn on that's in the combat section of the settings categories is target forwarding. If you're someone who is currently raiding or plans to raid in the future, or if you're a captain or lore master class, I would highly recommend this. This is almost like a necessary thing to turn on. In the combat settings, you just have to check mark target forwarding, but this allows you to attack any target that your fellow companion or fellowship member is also attacking if you click on them. What happens with the default setting is that whenever you're going to attack an NPC and you're hitting your skills, sometimes you can accidentally click on your fellowship member or say if you're a captain or lore master, it would be your companions. And if you click on them, it's going to give you this error message because obviously you're trying to hit a skill, but then it's like, 
you're attacking a friendly. So it's gonna give you this error message that'll say like, cannot attack target or cannot harm self or something like that. And you just wasted time because while you're over here trying to attack this target, but obviously you just quickly didn't have it selected, you possibly just caused someone to die in your raid. So in case of a misclick or something like that, it can certainly help. Super important, I would recommend everybody turn it on, but especially if you're raiding or lore master captains, you should certainly have this on. Another thing I quickly want to acknowledge is something that I typically forget a lot, which is simply just searching up for settings in the search bar. Whenever I'm under the options panel, I always forget that I can just type things into the search bar. And what's nice about it is that it will actually filter out from whatever keyword you type in. On the right, it'll show you and highlight like what category it could be under. So for this example, I just use frame for like setting my max frame rate. And there it shows me it's under troubleshoot and then I'm able to adjust it. For the last bit of this video, I really wanna focus more on like inventory and certain things that are important within your inventory that can help you with improving your gameplay. The first one I wanna mention is locking down important items in your inventory. You can do this by going to bag one. There is this icon a lock icon that is up on the top left and when you select that lock icon it'll actually allow you to lock items now you can do this already in vendors you can lock items which i'm sure you've seen but then the items disappear unless you have show lock shown but it's just so messy and doing it through the inventory is way easier personally in my opinion but it just makes it easier because you select it you then have the cursor on to lock whatever items you click on you could go through rapid click like everything and then a especially with unlocking it, you can just do the same thing over. So it's super easy, really nice to just kind of go through and lock things down, especially when you want to hit the sell all button on your vendor, which I never did until this year because I started locking things more. Another important item that you probably have in your inventory that should get locked, is your rep items. Whenever you have rep items in your inventory, you always have to go through and actually manually like click it and redeem it so you get reputation towards that specific faction. But instead of individually just right clicking over and over and over again, you can actually just mass do it by a few clicks. So especially in like when you're in Moria and you got like freaking reputation all over the place, you can just go through and hit the alt button plus your right mouse button and then that will allow you to have a little sub menu that pops up and it asks how many of the rep items you would like to redeem. It's super helpful because you don't have to frantically click. And one of the last things I want to mention is how to preview cosmetic items, which is so nice because there's this little dressing room that not only can allow you to preview certain items before you buy them in the game, but it can also preview certain dyes on those items. So for whatever cosmetic outfit you find, you have to make sure you hit the control and left mouse button, and that'll actually give Give you the preview window or the dressing room which will show you what the item looks on your character and you can obviously like go through a lot of different items try to mix and match your outfits and then show what different dye colors would look like under those menus in the dressing room so it's really nice because it helps you save a few coin before you commit to an outfit you probably wouldn't even like. If you need more settings or tips to improve your gameplay in Lotro, I do have another video that I recommend you go check out that I will link up above and it will also preview at the end here. But of course, you better stay weird, you weird weirdos.